guys, welcome to Didi Dice Crafty Corner. I am doing a handheld video today, so please excuse any dizziness, nauseousness, or whatever you might be feeling as I move around. But I've been asked a few questions that I want to answer, and I figured the best way to do it is just to show you. And then I also want to ask you a question. So let's get to it. So I have been asked so many times. How do I photograph? What's my lighting for photographing? So if you look right in front of you, the teal little three stand um, in the corner with the three teal little baskets right there, that's my filming setup. So I'm going to move, not my filming, that I've been, that's the second question. I've been asked um, to show my filming setup. I'm going to show you that next. But that little area right there where you see the big black light, let me zoom in, that one right there. So that little station right there, as you can see, that's the card I just posted on social media. That is where I do all of my photography. And the reason I have it set up that way is because no matter what time of night it is, midnight, three o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the afternoon, whenever it is, I can take a photograph and know it's gonna turn out okay. Now, on all of those bins, I have props or things that I could use, flowers, seashells, things like that. Um, I really prefer to have a blank canvas. I like to throw in a little white and a little color and that's it. But I know that social media kind of likes for you to have that. Now I'm going to bring you in a little closer. I'll give you kind of a little look at the room as well. Very, very, very low key this room is. So I've got these lights and I've got three. Actually, I own four of them. I've got three of them set up in the room. So as you can see, they can turn around. So let's just say... I'm going to try to do this. I need to look at my my station down here. You know, I need, hold on guys, I know that was horrible. But let's just say that I kind of need to look at my cutting station, which is right here in front of the window. I can put that light that way, and I can face it down, so if it's late at night, I can see my, um, my brother's scanning cut right there, no problem. But if I turn the light around, and I'm going to go ahead and turn this one around while we're right here. So if I'm taking a photograph... I would put one light right there, you see that, and watch this. And then I would put another light angled a different way. Hard to do one handed guys, just like that. And then I would zoom in and pop the photograph. And if that still wasn't enough light, then I would take this little light right here and hold it up at an angle upward, and then I would get the perfect shot every time. Now, as you can see, kind of everything looks a little yellow now, right? So you've got to move in, flip up to where it's white, and back down, and then a lot of the yellowness will go away. But if it won't go away, see how it's kind of yellow on the bottom? If it won't go away, then um, you use that light pointed upward from the bottom, and that will take away some of the yellow and make it bright white. And then you would just do your cropping from there. So even though it looks like that, when I snap the picture, maybe, right? You can either zoom in or you can crop it on a cropping device. So that's how I take my photographs. And then like I said, going down in here, that's where, all I, I, where I keep all of my props that I would use, papers and so forth. Um, what I have on the bottom here, this I could take a photograph on, but I like to take a picture, I like to take photographs on, my can on a canvas. And then I just have all kinds of papers clipped up back there that I can change out rather quickly just to give it a different background. So there's that. I'm going to leave, I'm actually going to turn this light back around to the desk real quick. All right, so that's that corner. Now the next question that I get asked, I'm just going to pan you around so you can see. So even though it looks kind of dark, it's really bright in here. That's the, this is the table that I used to craft on before I got my desk. And that's where I have my cutting station. So my, my Gemini, my brother scan and cut, and my big shot, those are the methods. I have a cuddle bug as well, but it's put away. In fact, I'm going to de-stash it soon. Um, that's where I do all of my die cutting. I have a little garbage can underneath the tablecloth there, and I bring that out so I can pick up all my scraps immediately. They're not laying around. Um, there's no garbage laying around, and I prefer it that way. And then under the table, I have the big black bin that you can kind of see right there. And that houses all of the images I've ever stamped and haven't used yet. And girls, there's a ton of them. A ton of them. So if I ever need to pull from something, I pull from that bin. 
it's an um there it's a file folding bin so it, they're all in files by name by manufacturer okay up on the wall i enjoy having all of my colors up on the wall so i can see them so i have all of my nouveau drops my enamel dots my stickles my watercolors my distress refillers my alcohol inks and my acrylic, uh, my bottles of acrylic that I like to use. I have bigger tubes of acrylic I keep in the closet, but I like to keep all of that right on those shelves. Um, I'm eventually going to be taking these down and I'm going to be painting those teal. I don't want my whole room teal. You know, that's my favorite color, that Tiffany blue is my favorite color. I don't want the whole room that color. I just want little accents of that color in the room. So now I'm going to paint you around this way again. So this is my actual workspace. So those are just the drawers from Michael's. And this is a ready-made countertop that you would buy for a kitchen or a large bathroom. Girls, my bathroom's not that large. Just going to put that out there. Um, and that's where I work. So I have my laptop on one side. I've got a basket over to the other side next to my Bose speaker. And the basket is where I hold all the things that I need to work on that's coming up. And the basket right in front of where I sit is holding what I need to do next, almost immediately. And um, then I keep a little little cup of pens or things that I scissors, pens, things that I would grab immediately. And then up here on that little white shelf above it is where I keep my glues, my texture paste, um, glitter, water, alcohol, things like that that I would need. I like to have this stuff on display as well as like you can tell my Nouveau drops are over there or my Nouveau flakes are over there. And then my Spectrum Nora markers are over in that little cubby right there as well as the few washi tapes that I still own. I don't like washi tape, just putting it out there. I don't like it at all. So, but I like to see the color. I like to see the things out like that. Now I don't use my Spectrum Nor for cards anymore, hardly ever. I It's just since I bought Copics, I use the Copics or pencils or watercolor, but I do use those on canvases and I like to use them on canvases. And then um, I have a little board back here and it just houses some pictures because I'm big into family guys, you know that. Um, I love, 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 love my family, all of them. So I have some pictures up there. There's some more over on the other corner over there behind the light of the twins and my daughter Elizabeth and um, and then right in front of me, you see that there's a brown board right there. That board and this stick is how I film. So it goes right over my desk. Oh, sneak peek of the card I'm making today. Um, it goes right over my desk. I have this little metal, this little magnet thing right here that houses some of the sentiments I can grab in a hurry. I'm all about having things at hand's reach but not having things cluttered. This, this space is so small that it's got to be um, organized at all times or you would just go insane. So I like to have them right there. So those are the ones I grab for the most. And then this right here is just a, um, this, is, this is not steel, and it would normally mount onto a wall. I didn't want it mounted into a wall, so I picked up this little board that you can make into a picture or something. And I kind of whitewashed it in gray and I attached it to that and then hung that up on the wall so that if I decide to move my desk to another wall, I could just move that and not have to, you know, put new brackets on the wall and stuff like that. And I really like that idea. Plus, it's not centered. If you've noticed, it's a little low right now. How that works for me is that if I turn that whole piece of wood upside down and then just flip this around... I can go up higher and then I also have uh, two screws behind where where you bloom I can take it even higher so and that's just something I'm working on I'm watercoloring it I picked it up at Target at the dollar spot last year isn't it pretty so I really like that I'm working on that I do things in phases like that and then of course that my desktop and I like to keep the black mat because it photographs very well on filming. But I also have my little craft mat which is normally sitting over here with my glass and I like to keep that when I'm doing distress inks and stuff like that. Those two things sit right there on my desk. That's the pile of stuff I got to get to to do. And then of course my Raskoff cart, Rath, 
rest cuff cart is sitting right there and it's very very easy for me to see and get into because there's a light here that shines on this part of the desk now when i'm just here crafting i normally don't have those two big lights on but when i'm filming that's the setup not that light over there by the window that's not on but those four lights are always on when i'm filming and that just gives me the perfect amount of light for the videos always to be as clear as I can get them in this dark little room, okay? So I might as well just show you. We're not gonna go into the closet. That closet is a hot mess because we're getting ready for a de-stash and I didn't take the trash out today. That's left over from the banner stuff yesterday. So there's that hot mess right there. Underneath my desk, I've got another one of those white cabinets that holds the those blue bins, only they're not blue. I actually prefer to have neutral colors. That's my that's my thing, but I like to have that pop of teal. So those three are right underneath my desk because I don't need that much foot room underneath there. And that holds um, all the stuff, my hot glue guns. I don't like to have any of that stuff plugged in and out. I don't want to see it. I want to just have it ready to go when I need it. So both of my hot glue guns, my heat tools, um, my foiling stuff, every bin has a name, has a, you know, has a purpose and that's where I pull from and that's right there in that bin, right underneath my desk so it's very easy to get to. And then my drawers are kind of organized the same way. Well, I wasn't really planning on doing a tour, but here I go, right? Um, let me see, top drawer has glues and whatnots. My cutting tool, an extra pair of glasses because you guys know I can't see nothing. And then a couple of corner punchers that I like to use. I think way in the back, not that one. One of them way in the back I have my, this is all of my um, stuff that I would use to do embossing. I do keep my ink upside down. These are my inks, my ink refillers, and my blocks. And then my stamp tools, all my stamp stuff, and a few dots that I like to use. So I keep my drawers very well organized. Let's see what's on the other side. Since we're doing this, let's just do it. You guys have been asking for a long time. So I guess I would call this my junk drawer. A little bit of my scotch tape. This is the storage device that hooks into my phone so that I can offload videos before I'm ready to upload them. That's important if you're using a phone. You need, you need to have one of these. It's a little storage device that you can plug into your phone and you can take all of your videos from your phone and store them on here. This is a 64 gig. And then you can put them into your computer if you want or put them back in your phone and upload them from YouTube there. So that's a must. Little scratches of paper, stuff to refill Copic, stuff like that. These are all my mini distress, my distress drawer, plus some extra Copics that I've purchased that I have now two of because you know I don't keep a list so I have all of the mini distress inks I've got some of the distress crayons and my distress markers are right there and this is all my other distress inks I have all the distress oxides and then um, these are just the big ones that I need the big ones of because I use more often all the little sponge applicators and my perfect pearls and then that's my watercolor drawer my favorite drawer <laughs> and then my other watercolors are up on the wall okay so then if you go this way this is what you guys see when I'm filming right here now hmm I have to say that I'm not very I, I don't really like this setup so much I would prefer for the cabinet to be white over there um, however, there are things that I love about this setup. Number one, I love having my inks, my markers, and my pencils all right there, all in one spot. I love having my paper on this paper rack. And I love displaying some of my cards over on this section. Now, the last three things over there in the corner are things that I need in an office, and this is my office. I've got to have a shredder. I have to have a cop of uh, Printer, which I actually have two printers. I have a color printer too that I only bring out when I need it. I don't use color printers. And uh, storage, I mean a filing cabinet. So that's over there in the corner as well. So this used to be my desk before I started crafting. It was on wheels, the, the where my paper is sitting. That was my desk. 
It has a pull-out tray where I keep my trimmers now and my photo printer. And then all of my watercolor paper and other papers are stored there. All of my adhesives are stored in the wicker basket. And then I have miscellaneous stuff for the printer and um, in the big basket and then some tools down at the bottom there as well as some movies because I like to watch movies on my laptop while I'm crafting. So if you can see up here, I have markers that need to be put away. Um, all of my Lawn Fawn inks, which are the only inks that I'm keeping right now, and that's going to change shortly. I'm going to be actually destashing my Lawn Fawn inks and going only to stamping up inks. That's just a preference. I love the stamping up inks, and I love the Lawn Fawn inks, but I don't need two inks, and I've decided to go with the um, stamping up inks. So I'm going to be switching those out, but I do have all of them up to date. And then over there, I've got my Zig watercolor markers, which sometimes I'll keep over here, but for right now, they're just over there. And then this over here are just my journals and stuff that I work on. And of course, some cards that I've made that are there that are inspiration for me. Not so much anybody else, but just for me. Of course, a Tiffany's box because, you know, a girl's got to have Tiffany's. And I do love Tiffany's. Not so much the jewelry, but I love Tiffany's, the store, the symbol, and um, some of their glassware especially. So I like to keep, I just like to have it. It's pretty, right? I love it. And um, my little flower bin. And then the bottom bin are cards. The, bo the very bottom are cards that I've made. This bin right here are all cards that I've received right there. This bin is mail that needs to be filed or gone through. This is incoming mail on top of a dinosaur. Christian, told you. He's in here as much as I am. Um, so this is mail that I have to go through and file away. And then this is actually a treat box for the kids. I give the kids surprise eggs or surprise things. I hide things around the house when they're here. And um, I keep the treats in that bin. And so far, they haven't found them. And then I'll stick them in little eggs or little things. And um, they have a little treat during the day sometime. And they forget about it, really, for most of the time. And then they just pop out and they find it. And it makes them super happy. So, yeah. So, that's what that looks like. So, that is what you guys see when, I'm, when I do a face-to-face -face video is right there. And I think it's actually rather pretty. I don't know that if it was white, it would pop as much. So that's the only reason why I haven't really changed it yet. But really, that's the only reason that's back there. All that used to be in my closet, but I have it back there now so you have something to look at. Just completely had a phone call there. Okay, so now let's turn you around without getting sick. So that leads into the hallway. And um, yeah, there's a car in the corner right there. <laughs> And then that's my closet. So basically that's what I work out of is that closet right there. Um, I keep a calendar on the wall, but the calendar I actually printed out. I just have Christian's handprints up there that he made me. And I print my calendar out and I stick it on that same calendar I've been using forever. So yeah, that is my workspace. It's a pretty large workspace. I think it's 85, 84 inches long, I believe. So it's pretty large. Um, and I really like having the countertop because it edges up right, it, you know, it has that, the backsplash on the back of it, and that way nothing falls down behind my desk. That's the reason I did that. Plus, I just like the off-white earth tones, and, um, it's, it's worked really well. It's a great countertop for a desk, so I really love that. So, I hope that answers some of your questions. Like I said, that is how I film. I'll show you. I just would take my phone. This is my... My, my second phone and I would put it in there just like that hit record and that's how I do my filming just like that and like I said I can adjust it either moving it up or down or turning it over or moving it up one set because I just like to keep it right on that board because eventually I'm going to be moving my desk to the back wall and what's on the back wall to this wall only because the window is right there and when I'm filming during the daytime so many people are like staring in the window when they walk by it's not because they're being nosy but you know you see bright lights you know movie lights in the in a room you stop to see what's going on so I'm gonna move it over here which is the you know I got a big spot here where they wouldn't see so that's my idea anyway
All right, guys, I hope that helps you. That's how I do my, my setting. I found that if I leave something set up to take photographs with always, and it's de designated just for photographs, then it makes taking the photograph so much easier. And um, you don't have to clear a space or take it on your dirty desk or whatever. You can set it up right there. You can stage it. And um, that's how I do that. And then for filming, I just film right there. Like I said, my phone fits right in there. And um, I have a little microphone I can wear that doesn't work very well. So I normally just film just the way it is. And that's how I do that. So if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Now for my question to you guys. My question is, you know, I've got all these banners. And now that you've seen how my room looks, should I put my banners here, going across there, and here? Or should I put them here, above the window, and going across to here, where you guys can see them when I do face-to-face? -face, face -to -face. Of course, I'm going to patch that little area right there where I had something, who knows what. So let me know in the comments below, where do you think I should put the banners? All right, I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.